Hey guys, this is GamerCal and welcome to the next part, the next leveling part of the Genius of Sephiroth Toho edition, obviously, because there's not an on Toho edition. So, last time we made it through the rest of the Neverworld, the second half, if you will, and managed to pretty much pick ourselves up all the items and had a lot of fun stuff that way. Got got to see the Philosopher's Cane, which is pretty good for later on, but not just now. And, well, this time we're going to go ahead and knock out every enemy in the stage and go from there. So, the way that I have this set up is uh, pretty much the same as before. I could go ahead and level Alice, because honestly Alice is kind of underleveled at this point, but... She'll get the levels when she's needed. Uh, honestly, she's fine in terms of defense right now and everything, so I don't really need Alice too much for leveling, so there is that. However, we do have a reasonable bit of new equipment to go over, so let's just do that just now. So, because of the donation box I got earlier, that means I've you know, I was able to make the armor for Reimu before, but I've also now made her second tier weapon. So I used all the Celestial Peaches I had last time on stuff. And this is one of them right here, so she gets some exorcism. She's a little bit weaker on the physical attack and a decent bit weaker on the accuracy than she used to be, but it's not really too big a deal because her magic attack has gone up a little bit and uh, she has extra damage on her spirit signs and amulets which going along with her bombs plus two is actually quite nice and I'll need to redo her growth tree stuff but she might actually have a few points in the sword tree right now so I could probably put those over and uh, raise her strength a little bit further Sun Eyes is the same as before so that's fine obviously now have the great maid for Sarkius so she, you can see her mammoth 195 physical attack is absolutely ridiculous. Also, she gets a Slayer on Foreign Gods now, which is the demon and angel type monsters that we have seen before. So she no longer has the Slayer against the frogs and uh, the slimes and stuff like that, but she gets a Slayer on the more powerful enemies. So very good, and also makes her practically immune to light and dark. As you can see, it's not a full immunity, uh, like the symbol would say, because the highest immunity a game, uh, a character can have is 87.5%. Enemies can be fully immune to one type of damage, but player characters can't. So, yeah, but even so, light and dark being resisted that heavily is really, really good. It is going to make it a lot easier to grind through this should be noted that the stronger weapons have lower accuracy than the weaker ones. So she is, for, you know, Sakuya now is three points lower in accuracy than she used to be. I may want to raise her induction, the murder tree, I believe it is, to increase that accuracy because it's pretty bad right now. Uh, but yeah. Um, Marissa now has her second tier armor, so, or I think it's actually her first tier armor. Armor doesn't get a new set every time, as you've seen. Uh, only certain characters get a new set when you get a new set of weapons. So, I think this is actually her first tier armor, but it basically gives her a lot more defense than the armor she had on, and she also gets uh, bombs plus one and a basic immunity to, you know, just about immunity to silence, which is really nice. So yeah, you could have that with the Magic Booster for more Master Sparking, or Non-Directional Laser if you want, and it's good. And then for Notori, I've just put the Imitation Slayer on instead. She is a lot less accurate than with the Crowbar, but it's a bit more powerful. It also has that nice resistance to Restrict status, which is really good. And I can probably buff her sword tree or something to raise the power of this. But essentially it's just a little bit more power, I think a bit more speed as well, and uh, everything is good. And then the last one I made was Satori's second tier weapon, because we will be using Satori in the next uh, stage, because basically I want to go... Once we've done this stage, I want to go back and 
do a little bit of explanation about Satori, we'll have an episode dedicated to her because it's Satori, why would you not? I don't know, Satori's quite a cool character, and as I've said before, she has the potential to be the MVP of the game, if you actually use her right. She won't become that until much, much later, but she's still pretty good even now, so once she's leveled up enough, we'll definitely be using her. So in preparation for that, I've made her a second tier weapon, which as you've probably been reading for the last, like, 30 seconds or so, has extra earth damage, good resistance to earth, and most importantly, poison damage plus 25%. Because that's where Satori's power is going to be in as these early stages of the game is in her poisoning. So, yeah, that's pretty much what we have. So, there's a lot of enemies left in this place. I'm gonna do my best to knock them all out, and uh, when interesting stuff happens, we shall go ahead and show it off. So yeah. And right away there is an interesting thing going on. Apart from the fact that we just got nuked by poison. Straight away we already have a new weapon to to use which is it's not even a weapon it's an armor but it's a new thing and that is always cool. So yeah we got the earth snake armor which you would obviously be able to guess will resist Earth by 25%. So a little bit stronger once again than the uh, the armor we had. 41 defense compared to 33. So Sunai gets an extra buff again, which is good. And then the Tori can also get an extra buff with the Water Cat armor. She is a little bit weak to fire at this point as a result, but the enemies in here don't use fire, I don't think. There might be one that uses Will-O-Wisp or something, but uh, she'll be alright. But yeah, extra defense is always good, so yeah. Oh, good. Yeah, suck it, bird. And Satori gets a level up for that too. So yeah, <laughs> that bird is just terrifying even by itself. So definitely a good thing to take it down like that. And Sana gets a level up straight away too, very nice, so one interesting thing per fight so far. Oh, very nice, also getting the, uh, the accessory from these guys too, as well as a level up for Marissa. So very good, very good, so Marissa has a bit more dexterity, which is nice. And we get the Stormhead amulets, so this Com uh, basically completes the quartet of uh, basic enhancement amulets. So now we have earth, electric, we have uh, fire and water. Of course we also have light as well. We should, well we might get darkness if we get it. I believe the shade is the one that drops that. Uh, the one eye monster from below. So maybe we'll get it, but if not then, well, we just don't get it. Wow, so many level ups. Also a power for everyone, which is good too. So Reimu finally gets a footer of healing, which is really nice. Uh, Dentori doesn't get anything too special, but does get a decent bit of HP there, which is nice. And Satori is getting up there. Level 12 is pretty good. We should hopefully get um, two, maybe three more level ups. Probably three in this place. So yeah, uh, Reimu does get skills for healing as we established before actually. They're not particularly good by themselves. Especially not this. It's like, well, why would you use this when Sanai has a much better heal, right? Because her basic heal takes 3 MP with no cooldown. But 
Reimu has growth tree reasons to use her heals. So if you end up using the barrier tree here, uh, if you fully max it, 25 points, you can see the healing spells actually gain a small area of effect. Plus, as you go further down, they uh, sometimes so, some some permanent effects can be cured. I think stuff like paralysis and whatnot. Petrify, I don't think, is one of them, which is annoying. I can't remember. I'm sure uh, sure I'll be told in the comments anyhow. But uh, yeah, the the heals that Reimu can give do get stronger when you actually use the barrier tree. So, there's a reason to use them, and they are pretty good, but not when they're uninvested, so do bear that in mind. Oh, hey, another Celestial Peach. That is definitely something I'm interested in. So, I wonder what I want to make with that. Maybe we might make the Tori's gun, and we could show that off. That would be nice. Okay, so the cool thing about the Tori's gun tree is, although we might not get to see it here because the battle probably won't last long enough, uh, the Tori actually has the capability of basically giving herself any core element she wants. So this is a skill you get with 5 points into her gun tree, and it adds any of the basic elements you want to her attacks. This doesn't... Uh, I think this actually does count in terms of these attacks too. So it basically gives all of her attacks that particular element, which can include Earth, something the Tori doesn't normally have. Uh, right now, this is the only other skill she has in it though, Zero Fighter for high accuracy, which is still not bad in its own right, because Notor Notori's accuracy is uh, notorious for uh, not being very high. I'll see myself out. And we get another bamboo, I believe it is, from these guys too, so that is always good. Uh, it should also be noted, Notori's weapon, is, her specific weapon, is the only powerful character-specific stab weapon you get during the game. And the only other stab weapons are lances, which are really not super great. As I've established before, I'm really not a fan of lances in the slightest. So Notori can give you a different offensive option compared to what you would normally have. That said, a lot of her gun tree stuff really isn't too good until you get to the later ones. Like, she will often do more damage with her chaser stuff if you dedicate to it. But right now, she can't because she just doesn't have the right sort of support for that. Which basically will make her attacks so much better on the, uh, you know, using the gun. So, that's what we're going to do. And so Sakya and Satori both get level ups, so Sakya gets even more strength in case you need it anymore. And there we go, that is the skill that you should have for Satori before you ever try to use her. Poison Art is just extremely good for a whole variety of occasions really, but it's a multi-target poison infliction. It only takes 6 MP too, so it really isn't particularly expensive. So if you want to use Satori early game, this is what you're going to focus on, poisoning everything. And it works to a surprising degree too, it's actually very very nice. And there was the example of Natori's multi-strike going through, so she can hit twice with her weapon and that's 25% of the time that's what will happen with the second tier gun. And just because I keep using my mic, of course, we uh, also get another rock from these guys too. So yeah, pro tip, 
don't mute your mic if you think you're going to get stuff. Even though I didn't think I was going to get stuff, uh, stuff was given to me as a result, so yeah. Oh, okay, it wasn't actually the shade that gives it after all. Uh, another case of that weird item glitch, we got the Echo Amulet. So the Echo Amulet is the dark equivalent to the Daybreak Amulet that Reimu currently has. So now we have one for every element except Mystic, which if we are really lucky, I believe it's in the next stage that we can get that. But that's another enemy drop, uh, like all the rest of them have been. So we'll have to see if we get it. And there is one more level for Sano. Now she has 100 HP too. Very nice. And there is one extra level for Satori, which is very good. Also, I actually didn't go ahead and show it there, but we are now at the point where some of our growth tree stuff actually takes more points to level up than it used to. So when you hit power level 25, your points start taking, or your levels start taking more points than just 100. So. We actually need 105 points now for our main party to get their extra power. This continues, I think, until five. Is it 500 points or is it. Ah, oh, that seems too high. Uh, it continues, I think, until like 250 points, so somewhere around about there. And then it goes up uh, 10 points a level for a while. I'm sure 500 was important for Summer, but I forget exactly what right now. But basically, it's not just a percentage, it does actually take more as you go further in. Speaking on power levels, of course, we have some power levels for our not main party characters, or at least not original party characters I should say, and uh, we'll have a power level for the others in the uh, next encounter. And in addition to that power level stuff, we also get another level for Notori which includes not a whole lot of stuff, but at least you get some intelligence, right? Because a warrior totally needs to have extra magic attack. I actually just caught this in time here. I realize we have yet to show off Notori's last word, so let's just go ahead and do that before I forget. So... Notori's last word is the Atomic Cover. It's a relatively strong attack. Don't let Strength Medium put you off. It's actually a lot stronger than it looks. Like, it's probably not too far off of Patchouli's Big Bang level of strength. And as it says, it always hits, so if an enemy has really high evasion, you could use this if you get it to make sure that you actually land the hit. And yeah, just giant explosion, lots of damage. That's about uh, seven ta almost seven times the standard damage on that enemy, I think. Oh, I don't actually remember because that enemy is resistant to stuff that way. Like strike attacks do a lot more damage than that. To him. So that might not be quite seven times. In fact, we'll find out here. Notori does 38. Okay, so it's actually closer to ten times damage though, which is pretty neat to have. So yeah very high power despite what it says. And whilst we're here, let's get a level up for Marissa as well, get some more intelligence, always nice. Uh, she's nearing the 100 HP mark, but her MP is just crazy. 
Like Marissa can cast spells for days and that's just very very handy to have. And Reimu gets another level 2. So Reimu's HP is actually really nice, 136 is pretty damn tanky for just now. So she might even be a reasonable choice for the center of the Hakurei formation if that's what you're using right now. And Saku gets one more level up. No skills yet, but she's working towards some new ones. Don't uh, don't worry about that. And yet one more bamboo for stuff. I honestly forgot just how expansive the underworld of this place is. This stage is basically two stages in one in terms of length, right? Although it's unfortunately not unique in said length, but uh, we are going to be seeing more lengthy dungeons as we go, which to be honest is fine, that's what you would want, but it's probably going to make this kill everything approach kind of unviable later on. Um, We'll have to see. Anyway, Satori gets a new skill, Collapse Art, which is for lowering the enemy's physical attack. Very nice stuff. And there is another rock as well for our collection. It's really nice getting all of these items just now because that will most definitely help out later. Even if it doesn't help out during the main game, Stockpiling these items is great for the post game, so it does help killing these things. I'm actually a bit surprised that magic metals are so hard to get. I remember having ten, you know, like 30 of those by the end of the main game before, but magic metals just don't seem to drop from as many monsters as I remember them dropping from. So, I might have to use some of my materials to actually craft them. And, <laughs> speaking of materials, I do think it's important that I show getting all of these, because then it sort of lessens the surprise, for lack of a better word, of, oh, hey, where did you get all of these items from, you know, when it comes to crafting something. It's like, oh, you suddenly have... 50 bamboo, where did you get that from? Well, I've been showing them all as I go. So yeah, finally at the second half. I don't even know if I've killed all the enemies here. I think there's one path I haven't gone down. I'm just going back to heal as we here. But yeah, I think there's one path I didn't go down. But honestly, this place is so expensive. I've already been doing this for over an hour. So... Yeah, you'll have to forgive me if I don't exactly want to kill that one enemy that uh, is going to be the same as the last like 40 encounters that we've had. It's not quite 40, but it's a lot of encounters, and plus now we get to fight evil trees. So yeah. Oh, that's what it drops, right, I forgot about that. So, it's not the Echo Amulet, it's the Shield of Darkness. So we've seen a couple of these already of course, but this is the very strong dark blocking version of the shield. Uh, probably not that good to be honest, there aren't too many enemies in the uh, early game at the very least to span darkness attacks, but there are some uses for this sort of shield in post game. I don't remember, I think you do get the chance to get an upgraded version of this though for post game, uh, before that sort of stuff would happen, so I think my advice is don't use it because it doesn't seem like it's that good, but eh, I've been wrong before. So more power levels for most of the sub-crew here, and Natori gets a level up with her first spell card version of her main attacks. 
These can be very powerful, especially if you use a contextual... It's not even contextual, that's patchouli sing. Uh, element bullets to change their type. So, Zero Kelvin Buster, it's basically just a more powerful version of the uh, Pororoka uh, Slash. For some reason, I always thought it was like Pokora or something, but it's not. I just don't read things good, apparently. Uh, but yes, more powerful version of that. It's actually very strong, to be honest. Uh, the cost is well justified. It can do a lot of damage, especially if you're hitting for Slayer, which is something that Notori's guns do currently have a Slayer against Warriors and Magicians. So, yeah, there is that. And an extra power level for the original crew here. Very, very nice. Oh hey, we actually got this from something there too. I think this is from the hanging nasal breath guy, the endurance ring. So this will increase vitality, which is defense, and I think that's pretty much all it is. Uh, probably the least uh, useful of the main things. Yeah, it just raises physical defense. Usually I think the increase this gives is almost definitely outclassed by the regular physical defense item, a uh, bracelet of protection or whatever, and even that's not the greatest item ever, so I don't think it's really too good, but again I might just be overlooking some sort of hidden stat like the potential and uh, critical hit chance. So, yeah. Sun Isatori, extra levels, good. And this. Now we get some actual magic defense, which is nice. So, the magic defense up skill is a bomb skill, unfortunately, but. Eh, Sun I can still make good use of it, and. Yeah, it's it's a buff for your magic defense, which is normally very difficult to raise. So that is good. Or so this is just a sort of example fight that I was I was talking about before when this bird gets involved. This is actually a pretty scary looking fight. Mm. I think I'm just gonna fantasy kill this because honestly, I don't want that bird to get a turn against me here. I guess I can also just blast it with that too. I really should switch Master Spark out for a non-directional laser because even though Spark is nice, it's a very very slow to cast, so it's not quite so good in normal fights compared to Magic Napalm. And there is the evasion buff if you have a dead ally at the time that will re revive said dead ally. So, and it, it zombifies them, uh, so they're under the enemy control. And wow, that actually hit, and we got the item of it. Heck yeah, I knew I was talking during this fight for a reason. So, <laughs> we get the item off of this thing, the Wisdom Ring, which is what I wanted for either Marissa or Patchouli later on. Increases intelligence a little bit, so your magic attack can go up with this. It's usually, again, outclassed. I think it's pretty much always outclassed by the uh, Bracelet of Insight. But you can't have two of those, so that can serve as an additional minor buff to your secondary magic caster. Very nice. And one more level for Marissa whilst we get stuff. And ooh, that is probably going to be my Master Spark replacement for just now. So I forgot she actually got this so soon. So Earthlight Ray, it's a little bit different to non-directional laser because unlike laser, it's not a multi-target move. So it doesn't always hit everything but it hits a very wide area. Think stream lasers, sort of going straight through everything, but wider. So you can actually hit things and it, it, it usually hits most of the enemies on, on the board if you target the center. Pretty powerful stuff. And it's a bit stronger than non-directional laser, of course. Uh, slightly more expensive to compensate for that, but yeah. it counts as a love sign, so if you're using uh, that tree, then definitely make use of it. It's a good skill. 
and you know what? I need to go back and heal soon anyway, so let's just demonstrate it here. A flight ray, it looks cool, and it hits wider than you would think. Still, it's affected by the usual thing of a widespread move, um, or any spread attack that isn't multi-target, in that it doesn't do the same amount of damage to every enemy there that exists at the time. So, that it hits, basically. It has a focus point, and anything that's not that focus point doesn't take as much damage. So do be aware of that. And just as I go to put my light on there, Reimu gets a level up and gets a new skill too. This is actually a pretty neat skill, I do like this one. So Fantasy Amulet, it is going to replace uh, Evil Ceiling Circle, just now I don't really need that. It's not a very powerful move, but it hits everything on the board at the same time. So I think it's pretty good. The upgraded version of this much later on in the game, like post-game level upgrade, I think it's about 80 level 85 or something she learns it, but the upgraded version of this Divine Amulet is actually a very, very powerful skill, even though it doesn't say that it is. But I still think this skill is pretty neat, and uh, we will probably be making use of it. I can at least show what it is here. I mean, I think personally it probably should have been called the Spread Amulet or something, because that's kind of what it is. Also, holy crap, I guess we're not going to get to use it, because Sakuya the Slayer there. You saw the screen flash yellow for the first one, and uh, yeah, Sakuya's Slayer power is incredible. Like, she gets so much power from her Slayer effects, it's just ridiculous, really. And uh, yeah, 1700 damage there. Basically, the Slayer crit is what happened there, and uh, that's why the screen flashed yellow. But yeah, that's what it looks like. It hits everything on the board. Uh, it doesn't hit that much unless you've got weakness on the go, but hey, against a flood of dart type enemies, it would be very powerful, right? So, yeah. Oh, and I guess they can also drop a shield too, so oh, all the stuff. I actually forget what the spirits drop. We'll find out here. It's, hey, well, would you look at that? It's magic metal. So we get the Herald Shield, which is, I believe, a shield for, yeah, it's good against Mystic. Huh. I actually thought it was light and dark, but I guess we already got a shield that did that in terms of the, uh, What's his face? It's the one which I put on you, right? Crescent Moon Shield? No, that's magic. Uh, oh, the Ghost Shield, yeah. So yeah, it can block Mystic attacks as well, which is not too bad. If you have Moko, that's probably a good shield to put on her, to be honest. Oh, I didn't actually realize that these guys drop Celestial Peaches too, so along with a power-up for Notori and Satori, we do get a Celestial Peach too. So I guess I might craft somebody else's uh, weapon or something? Or I might make an armor, we'll see. Maybe I just could just make Alice's weapon. Uh, that might be a reasonable option to get the day's infliction and whatnot. Honestly, at this point, I think I have all of the items I want for stuff right now, but that might change at the end of the stage. We'll see. I'll leave it. I'll leave it open as an option just now, and we'll we'll work out what we want to do afterwards. As Notori gets another level two, which is very nice. I think next level she gets her fire-based skill for spell card stuff, which would be nice. One more power level for Sakia, so she is not too far away from everyone else. Um, 
basically just a full level behind as you would expect really for not being one of the original characters. Ooh, this looks like a fun fight. And there is that level for Sakyo, and now she has Perfect Square, which I have actually never used because I didn't really see it to be too good, but regardless we shall show it off anyway. So whilst Private Square means that only Sakyo gets to attack for two turns, and uh, there was actually someone I didn't mention with it, is that the enemies also, because they're frozen in time, they have zero evasion in that time, so Sakiya's attacks are guaranteed to land, which is quite nice. And then Perfect Square stops all the enemies from moving. It costs a lot less, and I haven't actually gotten this to work very well before. I don't really understand it. Like, it, I think it casts the stop status, which is an immobilization uh, like quick status I believe or is it I don't remember if it's quick or like permanent or whatever but I think it's a quick status and it basically stops the opponents from doing anything for a while like paralysis but yeah I don't know it hasn't ever proven effective for me so if somebody knows how like to make the most of that skill then let me know because I do not have a clue And that is actually it. Uh, just checking through the place again. I think there's, again, I think there's like two places I haven't actually gone, but this place is a bit of a maze and I'm not gonna go through any more of it considering the length of this already. Oh man, I don't actually know the total runtime here, but I, I know the file size, because I can see that gun in a moment. It's almost 730 megabytes raw. And this is uh, exploits recording this at an average of about 1200, not even 1200 uh, kilobits per second. So, yeah, that is a really long time. I think it's somewhere around about the 90 minutes, maybe close to two hour mark. This this place is huge, and I would not blame anyone for just wanting to reach the end of this and be done with it. That said, I also wouldn't agree that it would be in one's best interest, because let me tell you, the boss here has definitely annoyed a lot of people for one reason in particular, but uh, it's annoyed a lot of people in the past, and hopefully we're going to be able to avoid the pitfalls that will come about as a result of this. But. Yeah, do not believe the playtime. The playtime, I believe, is glitched because, uh, yeah, obviously we have not been playing for 362 hours. I haven't even had this one switched on for that long. That's like an artifact from my uh, previous plays and stuff. But, yeah, this is kind of what we're at at the moment, I suppose. So. This has been Game of Cow playing the Genius of Sapphires, and next time we go ahead and take on Yuko, right? Because Yuko is totally the culprit, and well, she even sort of sounded like it in that mid boss cutscene thing, right? So, yeah, we're, we're totally gonna end this instant, right? That's, that's how it all works, yeah? See you guys next time. <laughs>